Last week, we filmed a dinner party given by Alex Smith, whose business is purification of lard and dripping. This week, at one of his factories, he's discovered a break-in. This is about the 25th break-in we've had in 30 years. It's obviously been done by a child, and we thought a child could not get through this window. We shall have to weld another bar across. It is like a prison. The typewriter is missing, calculators stolen. We lock them all up each night now. We've had about five electric kettles stolen and trivial things like this. I think the present recession might affect petty crime, but I can only cast my mind to the last depression of the 20s and 30s, which was far worse than the present time. They call it depression, but they all had the television sets and smoke cigarettes. But the real depression in those days, law and order was far more secure in those days, and policemen seemed to catch the men more often. Shoot out in Kensington tonight, but have the police gunned down the wrong man. A man was critically injured in an ambush set up by the police in the West End of London tonight. Bystanders said armed plainclothes police surrounded a car which had stopped in a traffic jam. Then they opened fire on the car from several directions. Alex Smith's break-in made no news, but the events in London on the same day did. Like the rest of the country, police law and order was the talk of Darwin. They must have been confident that it were there. Well, he must have been in the back of that bloody car. But he's he twelve in the back of the car. He were well, in the back of the car. The car just shoots a blow. They have to have some reason for shooting. So they're trying to make a reason. So they're they? trying to make a reason. That's what I think. They yeah, yeah, don't start yeah. bloody hammering the police because they are well, not hammering the police. What we're saying is they've got to be sure before they start ah, opening fire. Yeah. The police. They, they're not bloody mugs, you know. They can't you start opening fire in a built-up area to any bloody car that thinks there's somebody's in it. So if you sat in that car and you've got a bloody gun on me, an yeah, armor policeman. Yeah, any guns? An armor police. They had no guns. How did the police know? Well, they should bloody find out then before they start bloody they shooting don't. people. So you go to a knock on the door of a minute and say, "Have you got a gun?" Oh, my God, I don't believe this. There's all these police. Yeah. Car stop in a traffic jam. Yeah. Do they need then to rush out to start shooting? But the car can't go anywhere. How do they know that that bloke in that car were going to shoot at them? I don't believe this. There's an inquiry about it. It must be an inquiry, doesn't it? It'll be a government inquiry. It'll be a bloody government cover up. You more or less saying the police can get away with it. They can't get away with it. When have they shot anybody? They go to the walking police cells in. Uh, that is a different thing. When they get you in them police cells, they might give you a bloody good hammering. But they're not up and down shooting bloody blokes. They're still I'm not bloody bloody police, blokes. because if out goes wrong here, I ring for it, please. But I don't believe we should start being like Chicago. No, no, no. Every bugger running around with bloody guns just shooting them off like that. It's no bloody gun. Tell you something, he's talking about gun law. There is no gun law in this country. The there bloody police, will be, where they the going police on? are responsible people, and it's a bloody good job we've got them. That's correct, it is. Mother, I don't know. They're supposed to try and arrest people, not bloody kill them. If they want to kill people, they have to do it proper, hang them. After, after court, hang them. Well, we, we do away with capital punishment, the police are taking it over then, are they? Are they going to shoot everybody that does somewhere wrong? I think if somebody kills somebody, they should be hung. And I think majority of the country thinks they should be bloody hung. And I do. Right, now, Parliament, all these do brothers say, now they have to be hung or out like that. Now, I think they should get a trial and bloody hang them. But we don't want bloody police running around with bloody guns shooting bloody people. Bloody rubbish. It could have been they. Two senior Scotland Yard officers have now been appointed to investigate the background to the affair. 
that other lad was there, they could have all been seriously injured. Well, fatally injured, wasn't they? But I mean, why shoot him that many times? That's what I can't understand. I don't think there's any need for him to be armed at all. Personally, I don't. I don't know. They're, they're, a, they're not just the armoured police, though, are they? They're a special branch of police, aren't they? Police said later tonight that the armed officers were engaged in a special operation, but it's understood that the man in hospital was not David Martin. Well, they're just not doing the homework properly. They're going out to arrest a, a dangerous criminal and they see someone who looks like him and open fire. I think the thing that worries most people, it certainly worried me, is that they were armed and ready to draw guns at the drop of a hat almost, and that's something that is has happened in my lifetime. It, this didn't used to happen and it now happens and that, that's a worry. The new inn will be our regular throughout this series. Well, I can't say that was mistaken identity. I can't see at all that he can put down to a mistaken identity. No way at all. I think we sell two, three with this gun business, you know, that it's been guns now. One time when I was a young, you never heard of a Bobby. You went out with a gun run that, did you? It seems different now since they got these panda cars. You haven't got the policeman on the beat, like walking around and talking to people. He used to know your own policeman. Now he just flashes by a panda <coughs> car. You don't know who's who, you know. Lately, there seems to be a lot of shooting and what have you. I think just giving firearms to them willy nilly, like. They shot a man that was completely innocent. They didn't even question him. They fired before they give him a chance to come out and explain who he was or anything. How do you know that? Well, what I read, what I've seen on television. Can you trust that? Ah, now that is the point. That is the point. Well, we've got to, we've got to trust somebody. We've got to trust the, as you call it, the media. Like I don't, there's a word I don't like. The newspapers, <coughs> television, radio, what have you. And that's what they say, that as soon as the car pulled, it pulled up, they started firing. Across the road from the pub, its landlady, Millie Dean, has her regular shampoo and set. She's the one on the left. It makes you wonder about arming the police, doesn't well, it? This is know, it. Because I mean, to say it, let's face it, there's quite a few policemen shot, hasn't there? Well, this is it. Accidentally. It. I don't think they should ever be armed. It's going more it like is. America every day, isn't it? If you can't well, go down a London this? street, well, it's it. you yeah. just don't know, do you? Like in the old days now, I mean, those yeah. youngsters nowadays, like they'd have got a but behind the ear, but what did they get? Three months suspended sentence. Well, exactly. well what it's can ridiculous. they do anymore? Well, this is it. I mean, at one ridiculous. time you could get away with a, a clown around here, but I mean, if a policeman trying to do that today is an assault, is just assaulted the, the well, child. This is yeah. it. Because I think things are just going downhill. From from I've noticed the difference. My husband's in the police, and yes. he comes home and tells me certain stories and I think good gracious me you know that I mean yeah. the, the things that the kids get away with today not only the kids I'm not generally blaming the children but I mean no. the things that people are getting away with I mean the light sentences things like this I mean it's just ludicrous it's, the police are doing the job for nothing have so they ever caught any of the muggers what have they done to them oh that's on the end a fine that they'll never pay no oh, no they never pay the fines oh no so they'll get put away for about 30 days if they don't pay the fine, so what? And they're out again, aren't they? Yeah. They're out in three years. They're doing the job and putting the lives at risk in many cases. To do it, they are, yes. And then what are they getting for it? They, they go to court and they're so frustrated. I know for a fact a lot of policemen have told me they're so frustrated at the at the sentences that are well, given. Well, I mean, this is the job they're supposed to do and they're not getting the... Yeah. Let me get my hands on them. Well, anybody you must tell people, it's terrible. You can't it? walk the streets or anything now. No. I wouldn't walk to the circus. No. After 11 o'clock at night? No way. No. No, no. That's ridiculous the way all people are being mugged like that. The I don't think anybody's safe. What anyway. for? Money. What for? They only get a pittance, don't a they? Pittance. Most of them, yeah. Just a pittance. Yeah, it's awful. Good God. It's ridiculous that. Yeah. It's a shame. It's a shocking thing to happen. That old lady I mean, who got all, all them stitches. Well, this is it. I mean, to say old people like that, it could kill them. Yeah. The present government has brought in um, what they call a short, sharp shock treatment. 
And I think for certain offenders and for certain age groups, this is a very great advantage. But again, I think that a lot of the people that, by very nature of the crimes, get this sort of treatment are often too old for it to really be an, of any lasting value. It might make the victims feel better at the time, and there would be a lot of people that would argue, well, if it does that, it does a lot of good, and I wouldn't honestly disagree with that. But if you're trying to stop somebody doing something again, then I don't think it's a very great long-term value. Hamden Mill provides work for Marilyn, Florence and Andrea. Capital punishment should be brought back, definitely. Do you believe in it? <coughs> I do. Yeah, and no, I do. I should bring it back, definitely. I believe in like an eye for an eye, truth for a truth, definitely. If somebody murdered my mother, his sister or something like that, yeah, I wouldn't like to think that they were, or I, you know, they got life. I would like to think they were in a jail, because at the moment, prison's not a bad place to be in for lots of people. It's quite, you know, comfortable. For such things as muggings, I think the birds should be brought back, and I think they should, it should be done in public as well, because I don't think after having the birds, they do it again, not too quickly anyway. Yeah, I should, they should have a right good whipping, you know, put them in the town centre and really make a spectacle of them. Oh, oh yeah, prison afterwards, yeah. And maybe when they come out, they would think twice next time they you know, even had that inclination. Yeah. And the second time, if it did happen again, then Birch again, prison, and then Birch when they come out, just to make them remember the Birch and they went in with. For rape, I think personally, I could <laughs> rape capital punishment. Definitely, because corporal punishment, they could birch somebody for raping somebody, but I mean, that's not long lasting, is it? Is it? That could last that in a couple of years and they could do it again. Yeah, well, they could have sought their life sentence. How about a life sentence then? What about a life sentence for rape? Yeah, instead yeah. of capital. Yeah, but you're killing them. Life should be like. And definitely. This is, this is the idea of it, isn't it? I mean, life now is like 15 years. What is 15 years? It's nothing. For rape, I think sentences are too light, definitely. Compared to what uh, somebody who robs a bank can get life, I think that's wrong. Because if you rob yeah. a bank, you're not actually hurting someone mentally and physically, not like you're rape. Well, there's no justice in that. Or at length of the prison sentence, or like copper punishment, but we're not capital punishment for rape, surely. Yeah, but I think uh, with rape, there's a lot more damage done than a lot of people know, to that girl anyway. I mean, I'd hate to think that if somebody wouldn't, you know, I don't think I'd be all right if somebody raped me after a mental uh, You can understand how some people, it, it drives them, it could drive them insane, couldn't it? The mental stress of it all. Well, what I'm trying to say, why capital punishment? Because I think it's, I just think it's wrong. To me, it's as bad as murders. Committing a murder, rape, because in, in one sense, you can kill a, a person's life just by raping somebody, I think so. Would well, you read that paper last night, that telegraph? That's that telegraph? No. That little girl? That's the little girl. Love your old. In the morning, no. going to school. I we thought he went mad last night. Absolutely mad. But and he said he wouldn't need police. If they found that law, yeah. it wouldn't well, need police until tomorrow. I'll tell you The Home Secretary calls the police shooting mistake a most serious, grave and disturbing incident and says a report's going to the Director of Public Prosecutions tomorrow. Violence begets more violence, you see, and that by flogging somebody or that sort of thing, you bring on more violence. It doesn't cure it. Well, I once it thought... It begets more. Uh, I don't want to be branded as one of the hangers and floggers. I'm, I'm not in that category at all. I'm a moderate in most things. But uh, this needs reviewing. It's not just a question of that, that's the detail. But we don't seem to be willing, to, or Parliament, to tackle the problem. And the people know more about this than Parliament does. What about the shooting, Bill? <coughs> well, this raises the, the big question as to whether or not the police in this country should be armed. Now, the police, for from years have resisted this. They do not want to be armed no, they don't. for the simple reason that they want to prevent a ah. shooting gallery becoming the norm in yes. in England, mm -hmm. as it is in many other countries. So to this extent, the police, I think, are right. But on the other hand, 
Uh, I feel sorry. For, I, I sympathise with the police because they're not protected. Well, they've made we a, a real ghoul there. We put they? the police there to protect us. Well, we have an obligation to see that the police in turn are protected, and that means by the force of law. Mm. Now, yes, uh, now, if Parliament will not take this kind of action, then somebody, whether it be the police, or the army in Northern Ireland, or wherever it is, will do it in a summary fashion. Yeah, and this is bound to happen, they take it into their own hands yeah. to do it, mm. and then we shall have gang warfare. So I think the onus is well and truly squarely laid on Parliament. I don't mean the government, I mean Parliament. Parliament does not have the will to tackle law and order in this country. Parliament, I repeat that. Well, I don't think it lacks a will, it just no, hasn't. No, no, Parliament doesn't have the will, uh, simply because we are, it, they, they look upon crimes of violence almost like a, a disease that's incurable and providing it doesn't get out of proportion we tolerate it we tolerate it for comfort but many of the MPs anyway don't see this sort of thing happening they get into a cab at Westminster and they're spirited off to King's Cross or Euston and they don't see this sort of thing oh I don't know about that no. I think it's a matter of trendy politicians mm -hmm. wanting to follow the new intelligentsia the intelligentsia who believe in all reversing, overturning all the old standards. In other words, we support, we don't support liberators anymore. We support the, we exonerate the aggressor. Where is the logic in having nuclear uh, defense whereby we're quite prepared to exterminate uh, murderers from another land when we're not prepared to oh, take well. up arms against our own. Yes, but that's that's no a logic matter of in necessity, it. isn't it? Well, is it not Keeping a matter of the balance with the Russians, well, isn't it? Yes, but the, the, if we're I mean, going nobody to, wants them. But we don't believe in capital punishment for ourselves. But we believe in it for an enemy from outside. Their enemy is just the same. The enemy within, the enemy of the state, just the same. This morning, one of Stephen's lungs began to fill with blood and then collapsed. This has now been drained. Another contributor to the series will be listening in not only to national but world news. Radio Ham, Bill Lishman. What's happened with the police over the life of this government is that very early on, the police were very, very quickly given an increase when, of course, the government had already announced its intention of keeping wage increases down the army had an increase as well. There's been further increases to the police since then. They've been generally played up to a little bit by the government. We're not disparaging the fact that the police do a good job. All right, basically, they do. But a cross-section of police is no different than a cross-section of any other section of the community. There's been quite a few incidents over the past couple of years in which armed police have been used. The control of the police at this stage, I think, must come a little bit more under things like the local authorities, uh, things like the county authorities and things of this character, so that there is some control over the police itself. Meanwhile, at Scotland Yard this afternoon, the Metropolitan Police Commissioner, Sir Kenneth Newman, was handing out bravery awards to 11 London policemen. Afterwards, Sir Kenneth had this to say about the incident on Friday night. So yesterday, we made a statement uh, in which we expressed very deep regret about the incident in Pembroke Road. And I repeat that uh, expression of deep regret today. This is the home of Ruth and Dennis Byrne. Although working for the Inland Revenue, they'd prefer to be farmers. It's not what we understand by British policing, is it? I could understand it in that uh, the Barry Prudham case, where the man was going around the countryside um, killing indiscriminately and had to be stopped before he killed anybody else. But uh, this, this case in London doesn't seem to um, be following that same pattern. Um, I don't know so much. The, um, they were looking for this man because of an attempted murder of a policeman and uh, I think that in these circumstances they have to go about armed. Tonight, Scotland Yard revealed that guns were issued to their officers on more than 15,000 occasions in the past three years, but in all only 38 shots were fired. It's tragic when, when they are killed in the course of their duty. Like the incident in Blackpool, the, yeah, exactly. the drowning, it's, it's terrible. It's very easy tragic. to condemn what happened in London, but uh, don't lose sight of what happened yes. in Blackpool. And uh, that's, that's probably a truer reflection of, uh, of police work than what went on in London. Yes. This whole question of police um, armament is something which is a tiny part of the police function, isn't it? Uh, and it's got to be kept in perspective that um, 
for most of the time the police are not armed, nor do they need to be. But take, for instance, this dog situation from last week, was it, I think, where the, the policemen all jumped in after the dog. The, yes, that and, is. And they got now killed. That. Now, they bl I read in the paper whereby this man said, well, fancy diving in after a man and a dog in the such seas. Anybody wouldn't do such a thing. Yeah, precisely. Well, no, you wouldn't let the man drown. You don't. I mean, the dog. But I mean, for so many lives to be risked over a dog. Over a dog. And then this man who, who dared to write in the paper saying. Um, they were stupid to dive in. Okay, but you've got to put yourself in the circumstances. In the, you've got a group of yes. people, you know, got, yes. watching what you're doing. If you don't do anything to save that man, then well, it'd have been all wrong. Well, of course. You could but just because they headlines. dived in now, they're all fools. Mm. So I mean, where no, do you No, they're not. I mean, to say let's put yourself what? in that same situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, in the last four or five years, you know, things are getting so worse. And the attitude of uh, local people, English people, is changing now. They don't, they don't even want to look at us. I mean, forget about smiling. A lot of people, they, they don't risk, you know, to go and uh, live on their own in a small area. There has been so many violence, you know, in the previous uh, few years, uh, that uh, now, Obviously, uh, uh, colour immigrants have lost trust in police, and police is the only uh, person who can protect them from all these troubles. Hello. Have you had a nice day? Yeah. Yeah? Very good. I've seen it happening in the big cities, that uh, now they've got their own groups and their own people you know, to protect their community from uh, violence and all these terror and these things. When, when I was young, when I was a, a, a lad, there were more policemen on beat, walking round, and they were sociable, you know, like uh, you could go to them and for help and, and uh, advice and that. You can't today. Right. See, a lot of old people like to think of police as the old village Bobby patrolling round on his yeah, own, nice, totally. happy, rosy cheeks and a big silly moustache sticking out here or something. But so ridiculous hat on, walking out saying, oh, good morning, citizen, how are you today, and all this. But they don't. Some of them Most do police, so, some, some of them, yeah, some. But most of them will walk past you and give you a dirty look. All the people, they don't understand it because they don't get hassled. So, don't so if you say you get picked on, I mean, they don't believe you anyhow. And some people think, oh, you should get picked on for dressing like that. And there's people who like bigoted you. like that, I mean, think things like that. But as for whether you're too much or too little, power, I don't know. I suppose you're too much. Well, I think they've got too much. Because if you consider that there's a law covering which I hope you do. I mean, if you're drinking on the street, sir, they, they can't, they, there might not be a law to say you can't drink on the street, but they can say behaviour likely to cause a breach of the peace. Or if you, I don't know. Say, say you gob up floor or something, that might be uh, insulting behaviour, something like that. They can get you for anything if they want to. So I think they've got too much. Or at least what they've got they shouldn't abuse like that. It doesn't make you respect police or anything like that. You're supposed to hold people and that respect them and that. I mean, if they keep picking on you, you're not going to do are you? You're not going to trust them at all. I'd like to have... All copies coming up talking to you, saying, oh, yeah, yeah right, Scott, or Bobby. But when you're well, walking past them and you're like feeling that. guilty or something, and you haven't done anything. Guilty, yeah, but I mean, you just feel a bit odd walking past them, right. right? On the whole, I have every admiration for the police. I think they're still underpaid, and I think they deserve all the pay increases they can obtain. Nevertheless, the system over the past 25 years seems to have broken down. And people are frightened. People are not able to walk the streets. Uh, in peace, uh, even in Darwin. My wife stopped to go into the ladies' toilets and a, a coach dro dro drove up with about 50 drunks in it. They filled the men's toilets, they broke through and broke uh, through the bushes into the ladies' toilets and my wife screamed and asked for help. I went there and on the doorstep were two men urinating. 
They were stood all over the toilets inside urinating. I forcibly removed one of the men because my wife couldn't go in in order to be sick. I removed him and I was set on by a gang of at least a dozen who beat me. Uh, one of them said stick a knife in him. I then travelled five or six miles knowing there was a policeman in a car waiting for drunks on the Blackpool Road. I contacted him. He refused to do anything at all about it. He said he was traffic. It was Lancashire County Council, please. I described the coach. They were going to the Midlands Mansfield and nothing was done. He said, well, you have to speak to the borough, please. There was no phones round about, so I drove home another six miles and then told them. Then they said, well, you should have told us earlier and nothing at all was done about it. I have a feeling that if things deteriorate, you'll have people taking law into their own hands more. I would gladly have purchased a small automatic in case it ever happened to me again because the, pe the police were incapable of protecting this. If anybody shot my son and stabbed him, I'd do the same myself. And I'd suffer the consequences. I'd go down. Because if anybody got hold of my son and my daughter and raped him, raped my daughter, I'd get hold of him and I'd hit him and I'd kill him and I'd suffer the consequences because that's my own flesh and blood. But you can't speak for like anybody else what they would do, but I'm speaking on behalf of a mother. But I wouldn't like to see the, you know, the man on the beat walking around with a, with a shoulder holster or a, oh, a hip no. holster. No. He's like, like, pull it out quick, like that. Yeah, he's going to pull it out and he's going to cause a shootout, isn't he? Yeah. And plenty of people are going to die. Kind of an eight-year-old like. Yeah, and uh, that's what's going to happen. Well, I mean, can you imagine Toxteth riots? We are in police. You know, your average m man on the uh, cop on the beat is armed and the talks to riot starts up. You know, you got 20 guys chasing you with bricks and picks and all sorts of stuff. You, you know, it's... Uh, yeah. It'd be gang warfare, uh, really. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 would, it would literally become the police against the people. It'd just be a yeah. Yeah. The gang warfare. Every police station in the capital has at least one crack marksman. And altogether, nearly 5,000 of the Mets officers, that's about one in five, have undergone special training. I think if we went like America, we, this country would go a riot. They'd go a riot, they'd be killing each other. It'd be who could get a gun first. Who could shoot one another fastest. That's my opinion of, of here. I don't think they should be allowed to carry guns, really. A large contingent of uniformed police were on duty outside the Horse Ferry Road court well before this morning's remand hearing. Both men were dressed in black raincoats and stood in the dock as the charges were read out to them. But under the terms of the Bail Act, the prosecution felt that there were no conditions which called for a remand in custody or for conditions to be attached. For a start, they were automatically given bail. And there was two lads yesterday, it was on the news last night, They've been in custody for two years at Salford and uh, the jury found him not guilty after and they spent two years in uh, custody and yet the police automatically for near enough a murder charge is given bail. That's preferential treatment. The case has been investigated by one of their own which I think is wrong. It should be investigated by a uh, civilian, somebody not connected with 